resilient, optimistic, fueled his dreams and led a life of hope and conviction from this day 30 years ago. We are here today to explore, learn from, and celebrate the visionary that Vedi is, who has worked tirelessly over the last few years to raise awareness about spinal cord injury in India. While I know him to some extent, I look forward to discovering more of him today along with you. I'd like to now introduce uh, Ilango Tambaya. Ilango, an alumnus of IIT Madras and IIM Bangalore, is a corporate leader with long stints in reputed organizations such as Titan, Airtel, and the Tata Group. He has played an integral role in the Indian telecom story over the past 20 years. He is a co-founder along with Vedi of the Ganga Foundation that focuses on enhancing the quality of life of persons with spinal cord injury. He is also involved in mentoring multiple startups, commercial as well as social ventures. Ilango is an active fitness enthusiast, having completed many marathons and is now pursuing his ambition of competing in Ironman. So over to you, Ilango. Good. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, see, Dr. Parashar, she didn't tell enough about herself. She's a solopreneur who recently started her own private practice in clinical and rehabilitation psychology. She headed the Department of Psychology in Indian Spinal Injury Center prior to setting off on her own journey. Using a strength-based perspective, Dr. Divya Parashar has been working for over two decades with individuals in the field of mental health, enabling them to lead a meaningful, purposeful, and value-based life. She is an accomplished researcher in the field of rehabilitation psychology, a publisher, writer in popular newspapers on topics of mental health, fitness, active blogger, and she is also an avid marathoner. Now, I think uh, I must uh, uh, talk about uh, S. Vaidhinathan. Before I talk about him, I want you to visualize this. You are 25 years old. You are from a lower middle class financial background. You have worked and studied hard all your life and got admission into one of the most prestigious institutes in the world. And naturally, you would be looking forward to a great paying job that will bring joy and prosperity not only to you, but to the entire family. Just a few months before this dream could come true, a split second accident destroys everything. Not only yours, but all your family members. The suddenly the future is completely bleak with the no hope and chance of normalcy returning. You wonder whether there is any light at the end of the tunnel. What will you do? Normally people blame God or get into depression, bitterness, anger, and there are times when people take extreme step of escaping from all this. What I kind of that visualization, what you did is exactly what happened to Vaidhinathan, aka Vaidhi, 30 years back. But unlike most people, Vaidhi accepted the new reality and fought all his way for the last 30 years to achieve things that most of us can only dream of. He has become an example for countless people. I have personally witnessed numerous people who had given up and before they met Vaidhi. And then they go back and charge and moving ahead in their lives in ways that would have appeared impossible before they had this meeting. Vaidhi gives them a new hope for his tremendous contribution over the last 30 years I am Bangalore, our alma mater, bestowed him with the honor of I am Bangalore Distinguished Alumnus Awardee in the year 2018. And I'm glad I know him personally for the last, since 1989. And people ask me uh, whether we are from the same class. The answer is no. Actually, neither of us attended a class when we were in the institute. So we are not technically in the same class ever. And I'm not going to talk about things that you should hear from Vaidhi. I'm just going to say, my pleasure to present to you, Vaidhi. Over to you, Vaidhi. So even before, Vaidhi, you start off, I think it is easy that we start off with some questions and then you kind of start answering. 
Let's start with this one. Tell us a few interesting things in the last 30 years. That will help the listeners to know you better. They all would have read about you. Let them know you better. Say something interesting that has happened in the last 30 years. Uh, thank you, Elango. Uh, good evening to all of you. And uh, at the outset, uh, if uh, I'm here today having lived wonderfully well with spinal cord injury for over oh, three decades now, I owe it to Dr. Mary Verghese, who envisioned physical medicine and rehabilitation in India in 1958 and set up India's first dedicated institute for rehabilitation of persons with spinal cord injury in 1966 as a part of Christian Medical College Vellore. Uh, perhaps the most interesting thing was that I went straight from the Rehabilitation Institute to IM Bangalore. I did not even go home for one day and uh, on the day we went, we did have a party and uh, had a great time and uh, I was able to resume my education there. And I was, I lived a complete life on campus. My mother was also with me on campus. Uh, her name is Ganga and at the age of 65 and 66, she had wonderful hostel life uh, and had a terrific relationship with several of the faculty. I subsequently moved on into corporate career with the Hindu and the Sundaram finance groups. And the wonderful thing about both those jobs as well as my stint two years at Iron Bangalore was that nobody ever spoke to me about my disability. It partly had to do probably with the way they were, uh, they were and partly also probably the fact that I never conveyed the impression that I was a person who probably needed help. I actually, to this day, I don't think of myself as a person with disability. I just think that instead of walking from place A to place B, I move on a wheelchair from place A to place B. And other than that, I do everything that I would have wanted to do on the day before my injury. And uh, over the years, uh, very early after I came back home, I have fond memories of my nephew Vignesh, who was uh, at the age of five and six. He used to ensure that nobody at home helped me. Not that I tried, but because he had been observing me from a uh, uh, very early stage, he was the first uh, person in our family to be born after my spinal cord injury. And he had observed me doing everything. And if and when somebody tried to help me, he'll make sure, please do not help me, help him, let him do it himself. So I had a occupational therapist come policeman at home with me in the form of Vignesh. And uh, I've traveled, I've done everything. I've traveled across the country. Over the past 10 years, I've uh, had the blessing to come in contact with uh, a few thousand persons with spinal cord injury across the country. It's been a, an amazing experience. Uh, I've also got into avid uh, marathon running on a wheelchair without assistance. I may not be the fastest, but I can always say that I was, I was the first to do a 10 kilometer on a wheelchair, a half marathon on a wheelchair. And the most adventurous of them all was the 14.2 uh, kilometer descent of Elagiri Hills, which is about 150 kilometers from Chennai. And uh, uh, it had hairpin bends, uh, traffic, uh, undulating roads without any protection, but just decided to do that. And uh, uh, scuba diving, going, getting in deep into the Bay of Bengal. I think variety of things have been done. Personally, I'd like to summarize my 30 years as showcasing the possibilities of life for persons with spinal cord injury. Uh, what, have, yeah. what have been some of the most important uh, strategies and influences maybe that helped you cope with the injury? Uh, first uh, is the philosophy of Agavindi Adapara, which in English roughly translates to uh, always look ahead and do what needs to be done. I think that is uh, something that my mother drilled in all of us and uh, I think it was deeply ingrained in me. So within 45 minutes of my dive from the first floor at the IIM Bangalore campus, uh, here I was at the uh, St. John's National Academy in Bangalore and I was asking the duty doctor after the x-ray, will I at least be on a wheelchair? Uh, why did I ask that? I knew my legs were not moving. I did not know about spinal cord. I did not know about spinal cord injury. I did not know about the consequences of spinal cord injury. 
but what i knew was my legs were not moving i realized that at least i needed to be on a wheelchair to get back to uh, campus as early as possible and resume and complete my course that has always been my about driving philosophy to this day that was of immense help uh, second i decided that i will stick to science i'll stick to evidence based approach and i will not fall for false hopes i will not fall for fraudulent medical pseudo medical professionals who offer treatments trying to capitalize on the emotions of the person with spinal cord injury and or the family and i decided not to try any alternative treatments because the most important aspect was to ensure that i did not suffer any additional damage that was foremost and that is at the start of uh, uh, the injury but for a person with spinal cord injury to really live well throughout his life uh, absolutely the most important and almost the only thing that is important is skin care because if you do not take care of your skin you will not be able to sit if you will not be able to sit you will not be able to do anything so the only thing i tell myself day in day out when i wake up is today i will sit for the longest possible time and to do that i will do all the necessary low cost efficient and proven methods of skin care that are taught in uh, christian medical college valor so with these insights you gained vedi what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them because all this knowledge and insights came but what were some of the challenges that led you to them two one it took me three months to convince the psychologist or try to convince the psychologist at christian medical college velo in the rehabilitation institute that i will not go into a depression after i go of go from there that was a strong belief and uh, uh, it took time second midway through my rehabilitation something that i had taken for granted that i'll be able to go back to iim bangalore and resume and complete my mba program that it is very understandable in those years i am bank the i am bangalore management with a campus that was not accessible then with a campus did not have a ramp or a lift did not have a classroom on the ground floor the hostels were not accessible the toilets were not accessible uh, so it was perfectly understandable that they refused to grant me admission i was quite prepared for that because i thought i had the option of going back to my previous job uh, but one one person will not have anything of that and that was dr suranjan bhattacharji uh, head of physical medicine and rehabilitation then he went on to subsequently uh, be the director of christian medical college velour because he had in the mid 80s uh, studied his post graduation in the united kingdom kingdom and lay a scene persons with on wheelchairs leading life a uh, complete life he would refuse to have nothing of the refusal he patiently worked with the then management of iim bangalore convinced them and finally in december 1991 he wrote a 343 page word letter that adorns the office of disability studies at iim bangalore even today in that letter he made a persuasive case not just for my readmission but also for the vision of an india where persons with disability will be empowered to live life to the fullest and highest potential so i think he did the job of overcoming that challenge i had i had to do nothing no i distinctly remember when those days the conversation with uh, dr suranjan and your early days in iim how we kind of shaped and uh, i can even now distinctly remember what we did but then quickly uh, moving on we see a lot of people have this doubt people are there in the wheelchair even the old people are on wheelchair sometimes when you have a uh, you know small problem with the leg you get onto the wheelchair and how complex is the spinal injured people journey on a wheelchair vis a via normal people when i say people without a disability getting onto a wheelchair just can you throw some light for the people see for persons who are elderly and need to be on a wheelchair they may need to be on a wheelchair for several years in that lifetime for others who are on a wheelchair for injury reasons they may need to be on a wheelchair for uh, a short period but for a person with spinal cord injury life on a wheelchair is very very important it is for a lifetime and 
for spine uh, i think a lot of people see several active persons with spinal cord injury such as justin or shams alam or sailesh or go gold narodan goldi move around very freely and they think that their life is easy, as easy as it is it isn't when you have a spinal cord injury a there is no cure b there are multiple disabilities that happen at one stroke the severity is greater when at a higher level of injury and uh, unless you are well trained unless you lead a disciplined life where you cannot do well i think uh, i took great heart from one sentence in nelson mandela's autobiography when he was sentenced to 27 years in solitary confinement he writes in his book on the first day in prison he decided living in prison is about all about having a disciplined routine and that is very important so i mean uh, just between uh, for example i'm just going to take ilango as a reference point both of us 30 years and in these 30 years i have had to do spend 7.75 years doing the basic essential things that are forced on you by a spinal cord injury to make sure that you are able to live life well for the remaining 22.25 years uh, how much time would ilango have had to spend in this period on basic essential activities 1.4 years and i would have spent the equivalent of 1.4 years just in bowel management to take out my stools i would have spent slightly more than a year in bladder management and uh, sexual ability is impaired but not uh, married life or all that is not uh, uh, impossible a great married life is possible i did not marry because of a personal reason that i had uh, in our family which uh, meant that i had to uh, uh, just skip that option but uh, that is how it is i think it is extremely uh, i wouldn't say it's tough like for me all these routines that it, uh, took 7.73 years it is just like you get up in the morning and brush your teeth so like that i do all these essential activities that will help me live the rest of the day well no no i think it's a powerful number 7.75 years for you and vis a vis 1.25 years for me is that the kind of number you said 6 years extra you had to do in the last 30 years 20% time yep and uh, keep in mind uh, whether i think you have not said this is there are a lot of people who by that they, they accept that they have to do this one day take time and i have seen people for four years or five years not even resorting to this and wasting almost all their time and their caregivers time on doing the basics that is uh, for someone like you who has got on top of that fairly quickly so maybe now that people understand this a lot of people uh, without a disability here and who want to contribute in some way or other and uh, kind of give them some basic things how they can make how they can contribute for example if they find someone on a wheelchair what should they do just give us something most of us feel quite awkward uh, when we see them saying we don't know how to do that are we supposed to help them not help them just throw some information it's, on that for us it's actually easy logo but unfortunately i think uh, some of people think that uh, uh, being to be inclusive with persons with disability requires some extraordinary steps it isn't i think uh, at the first level you need to recognize and treat every person with disability as your equal you can just walk up to them and start a conversation people often ask how do you start a conversation i remember Justin Jason as about 5 years ago he put it beautifully he said why don't we just go and say a hi it's as simple as that and you just go say a hi start a conversation become friends with them become part of your life and you will find often times that there are several aspects of your life that are probably that is more disabling than what the physical uh, challenges that a person with disability faces as a society i think we must not look at persons with disability as needing help or as persons needing pity or as persons needing uh, uh, constant support all the time never i think even i i know many several uh, several thousand persons with spinal cord injury from very economically challenged backgrounds who lead lives of immense dignity and uh, purpose so what they are looking for is an equal opportunity and equal opportunity means in every walk of life 
uh, in the at home in the community at the workplace in schools uh, so in everywhere in the minds of persons without disability so that's very important and never help a person with disability without asking if he or she needs help one of the most common mistakes that happens is the moment people see a wheelchair they say oh chalo let's go and push this person must be struggling now if you if you push a wheelchair without asking the person you may actually cause a fall you may cause an accident and maybe leave that person with a temporary or even a permanent uh, additional complication for life so never do that i think uh, once we start and please do not look at persons with disability as inspiration or motivation i mean certainly uh, i can speak for myself i am not here to be the inspiration quotient for somebody or the motivation quotient for somebody uh, maybe the right way is that i i'd like maybe the way i've lived my life can be an example for another person with spinal cord injury or a person with any other disability or probably even a person without disability but i'm certainly not an inspiration for whatever i do i complete a half marathon dr divya parashar completes a half marathon there's no difference between that it's just i, I think that it, that you should treat persons with disability with an equal mindset in every way if it gets into the mind, minds of all of us it will be great and as far as accessibility is concerned if you speak with a large cross section of persons with disability you will find that yes it will be great if places have ramps but what worries all of us more than ramps and what we need for an accessible india more than ramps is an accessible toilet in every place just to give you a phenomenal analogy in tamil nadu every single public toilet market every single public toilet anywhere in tamil nadu every single amma canteen which serves low cost food is accessible with the ramp and has an accessible uh, is accessible with a ramp and uh, uh, in places where there is space enough uh, 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 ramp that i a uh, wheelchair user can do on the own if it is a cramped area a ramp that somebody can push the wheelchair user every single government office that's come in tamil nadu after 2002 has ramps has accessible toilets and uh, accessibility unlike what several a few people are popularizing the western notions of accessibility accessibility is inexpensive all you need is 35 square feet for an accessible bathroom and uh, it's not going to cost a great deal of money i think uh, you said is the right thing you also said encouraging one the government is doing that i always we spoke about it when whenever i go there to any place i first look at it is the toilet accessible and in our own way we must go there and tell them to make that accessible for that you know you can't have one small step there for no reason you should build that one it is a pressure as all of us can put it we can change the society to be a little more inclusive sir you very rightly mentioned the societal attitudes uh, and the architectural barriers as well uh, what are some of the other big challenges you feel with all the scores of people with spinal cord injury that you worked with what are some of the biggest challenges that they face and continue to face i think there's only one challenge dr divya parashar if that is handled everything else can be handled and that is every doctor who first comes into connect with a person who reports as having sustained a spinal cord injury or a sus- suspected spinal cord injury this could be a general medical doctor and he, if that is the case he will definitely pass it on to the specialist and the specialist will inevitably be spine surgeons neurosurgeons and orthopedicians if this group of doctors and the first general doctor who may come in touch in certain cases if they report every case of spinal cord injury or suspected case of spinal cord injury to a central number and which is connected to the peer network i think we would be able to make a transformative change today for instance if i know that somebody in begusara has in bihar has sustained a, a spinal cord injury and if i know it i will be able to call the family members and or if the person and guide them on how to avoid the secondary complications and damages that happen in the first month or two after the injury if the best practices are not followed and so from that perspective i think if the community of 
doctors that is orthopedicians spine surgeons neurosurgeons and even general doctors start this practice and i think this will not become a prac voluntary practice this is something that has to be mandated by the government of india today the user group is uh, very powerful across the country it's a growing number and we would be able to do uh, justice to that here i'd like to just uh, give you a sense of a couple of key turning points uh, that influenced my outcome in over the and my lifestyle over the past 30 years first is on the second day after my injury my sister lakshmi rajagopalan she was able to uh, coordinate with the doctor who in whose laboratory she was the chief manager and dr b subramaniam and lakshmi rajagopalan together made sure that i uh, knew that the place to go was christian medical college vellore in 1990 the only other option was the paraplegic uh, rehabilitation center in kirki pune but those, that was mainly for the army and unless you knew anybody in the army we would not and that is how i was on the fourth third day after my injury i was at christian medical college vellore in the safe hands of uh, uh, dr suranjan bhattacharji who is one of the most acclaimed physiatrists in the world and is the doyen of rehabilitation in india and dr suranjan bhattacharji because a couple of my friends had gone and met him when he met me first uh, on a trolley i was on a trolley in a small corridor for two days because there were no beds uh, and uh, the first thing he told me was you'll be able to go back to your college and complete your education don't worry about that and with that he left and uh, that is how it started and the uh, those were two critical aspects i mean getting the right guidance on where to go and the fact that uh, dr sulajan bhattacharji showcased the possibility of life to me and telangana and me are also were also blessed to have uh, uh, an amazing piece of vision from dr sulajan bhattacharji he told us uh, towards the end of december 19 uh, in 1990 that uh, look you guys as i am alumni you'll be in positions of influence in due course at an appropriate stage it would be great if you could do your bit for persons with spinal cord injury so that is how uh, uh, we actually sat on it for about 18 years or 90 close to 19 years but uh, in september 2009 we set up the ganga foundation as an organization to try and do something for persons with spinal cord injury so i think this first step is very important getting the right guidance and the doctors are best place if doctors do not know today if they, if they connected to the centralized number the peer peer mentors and the peers across the country they will know what to do so can you tell us a bit more about the ganga foundation maybe uh we are relentlessly focused on working in the spinal cord injury space we started in a small way we were very volunteer based organization even after 10 years we continue to be a very small organization relative to the size of the mammoth problem that we face in india where 90% of people with spinal cord injury do not have access to quality rehabilitation 95% of wheelchair users sit on low cost uh, wheelchairs that damage health and lifestyles those are types of wheelchairs that went out of use in the developed world in the uh, 1950s so uh, these are just two examples of the massive challenges and when you don't have rehabilitation there's not even any question of livelihood so massive basic existential challenges is what we deal with in india uh, and i think i guess we'll be able to we'll be dealing with that for the next 10 years at least and uh, we have our core values are collaborate 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 uh, the right way always and to uh, encourage people to live life beyond the comfort zone and it is this uh, focus on collaboration that led us to uh, connect with various organizations across the country and we all happily came together and set up the spinal foundation as the pan india self help group for persons with spinal cord injury and the spinal foundation along with various partners across the country we hope to do in india what took 40 years for the spinal injury association uk to do we hope to do that in uh, maybe 10 years or 15 years so that's what we'd like to do our focus has always been on capacity building 
we've been close working closely with the ttk center for rehabilitation research and development at the indian institute of technology that is iit madras and uh, that uh, center is headed by professor sujata srinivasan herself an alumnus of iit madras she is dedicated her entire life to the cause of disability doing her masters and her phd in the field of assistive devices and from that working with that lab we have been able to provide user connect user connect networking access to rehabilitation expertise and uh, uh, it's very encouraging to see that a low cost affordable standing wheelchair was launched last year and neo motion uh, startup that manufactures affordable a world class by a wheelchairs and outdoor mobility vehicles that's just started uh, commercials launch uh, since last supply since last last year late last year and we need more of this i think we need we champion the right wheelchair program across the country because we believe users need to be aware of the importance of the right wheelchair users need to know that right wheelchairs availability can improve if they start making demands and more importantly doctors physiotherapists occupational therapists nurses paramedical staff you name it the community must know that even if it's somebody is going to use a wheelchair only for one month they need the right wheelchair you cannot have one ill fitting wheelchair that will leave you with additional health complications and so that is something that we focus on our approach has always been grassroots and we are focused on mostly the economically challenged persons with spinal cord injury and as an organization having been a volunteer led organization till may 2016 uh, it's quite sometimes scary to think that we are an organization with a 52 member team and 47 of them are either uh, persons with spinal cord injury and including three people who are not spinal cord injured but whose uh, family members have a spinal cord injury and when persons with spinal cord injury get working to train and motivate others with spinal cord injury the effect is transformative dr saranjan bhattacharjee always used to say of dr mary vergis for all of us she is the first peer trainer in the country he always used to say that uh, dr mary vergis never had to go and speak to any person with spinal cord injury and tell them you can do this you can do that just seeing her on the wheelchair uh, even doing surgeries was enough for them to shake, showcase possibilities of life so that is what is important and uh, that is what will be our focus areas oh, i have seen that by the in terms of the how the uh, peer trainers or the people uh, who are spinal injured can influence the others and uh, they can empathize far better i have seen the difference with so many people i have come across in the so many years tell me this year 2020 is uh, different now most things seem to be done differently compared to uh, earlier what we had done with this covid people are not coming out all most centers are closed and now what have you done and to make this one still accessible for people who need it uh, as an organization the ganga foundation will focus uh, to strengthen three of our existing programs that is one is one the spinal india peer trainers program to the right wheelchair and three uh, the spinal foundation uh, so that it becomes a bastion of uh, support for persons with spinal cord injury across the country of course we are only one partner in that uh, in the spinal foundation uh, from a, a additional initiatives especially in the context of the covid-19 pandemic era we are right now doing a pilot program for persons with rehabilitation of persons with spinal cord injury at their homes and uh, uh, using technology and uh, technology mm, using technology and uh, uh, trying to uh, get them to uh, up and running because uh, there is no question of anybody being able to travel anywhere and even if travel is possible if a person with spinal cord injury either recently injured or injured in the past and needing rehabilitation if they need to travel uh, it can prove life threatening covid 19 the chances of a person with spinal cord injury getting a covid 19 infection is just the same as everybody else but the gravity of the consequences and the pace at which the consequences will unfold will be significantly graver and faster so we are actually telling people to stay at home 
at least they are alive that way and uh, but we are trying to see what uh, in what ways we can make them as independent as possible and we hope to uh, make a formal announcement of this project uh, touch rehab quality rehabilitation at home once the pilot project proves uh, uh, that we can do indeed do it and we have a uh, outstanding team of experts backing this project the second initiative that we'd like to launch is a, a spinal india emergency fund where we would like persons with spinal cord injury who are blessed to be in a position to contribute to uh, the well being of others who may need support we would like them to contribute and build up a pool of funds and we will double it with matching contributions so that the footprint is uh, double and uh, we also visualize the spinal india virtual museum which will become the uh, his, his historic story board of persons with spinal cord injury rehabilitation professionals family members uh, institutions and other stakeholders who have played a key role in the development of uh, person you know, the quality of life of persons with spinal cord injury that's lot that we are trying to do <laughs> while we kind of spend time on getting these operations right i kind of want to ask this question now if you have to close your eyes and visualize now that you have done 30 years hopefully you live another 50 years so close your eyes and say what is your vision of future in this country we we will know where every person with any disability is we will be able to identify them we will be able to categorize them we will be able to refer them to the respective peer organizations we will be able to give, give them quality rehabilitation at an early stage to enable them to live life to their fullest and highest potential i think that is uh, what we should do and that is something that the government of india can do and today's technology and with the identification uh, pathways that are available it is very easy to do compared to say 10 years ago 20 years ago it would have been almost impossible but it's it's not as if we've not done it last year the government of india launched a national sex offenders registry if india has successfully battled polio it is because there was a program for every person with polio we need to do that with every disability and if we do that and if we are able to give the finest quality of rehabilitation that is possible i'm sure persons with disability across the country will become meaningful dignified contributors to the socio economic development of india and uh, i think uh, 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 just to get into my head what is uh, this quality rehabilitation and uh, i've been reflecting on 30 years i've had the opportunity to uh, uh, interact with maybe 100 plus 1000 plus rehabilitation professionals and uh, i try to look at well, if i had to set up a, a rehabilitation facility for all types of disabilities and have a dream team of uh, people who that would be and uh, so i'd like to just quickly yeah. to show that such persons actually exist i would like to present uh, uh, my dream team of rehabilitation go ahead as rehabilitation leader dr solanjan bhattacharjee the former director of christian medical college vellore as a lead physiatrist dr henry prakash as lead physiatrist dr anand vishwanathan all persons with disability especially who suffered uh, traumatic injuries they will need outstanding caregiving now this care at the, in the initial stages and this caregiving can be a, by a family person or by a, 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 an external caregiver and nobody epitomizes and is a perfect caregiver as much as sheikh farid to have sheikh farid with you is to have a nurse an occupational therapist a physiotherapist and a caregiver all rolled in one and coming with as a person who also symbolizes perfection uh, with disability even more than doctors the high quality therapists and peer trainers are important uh, my therapy leader would be sunil raj and uh, my occupational therapist would be samson daniel who works at uh, r2d2 at iit madras and is also used a champion at neo motion my peer trainer would be silesh kumar uh, who is probably traveled more than anybody across the nooks and corners of india 
to identify the challenges that uh, people with spinal cord injury face at the grassroots level. Any therapy team will need uh, at least two therapists, and my second physiotherapist would be Ramesh Sridharan, who absolutely believes not so much in therapy inside the therapy room, but uh, going out outdoors and pushing people to go beyond their comfort zone. My second occupational therapist will be Rani Alexander, who was the occupational therapist for me in 1990 and an extraordinarily tough uh, person. I think uh, I, when I look back, I wonder how I managed to survive all the things that she wanted me to do. And every team will need an outstanding nurse and uh, nobody uh, in the spinal cord injury space comes as close to Sister Bhagyam, who used to head rehab nursing for the rehabilitation uh, program at Christian Medical College Vellore for seven years before moving on to senior roles at the main hospital. And as psychologists, I am not, I mean, in general, psychologists tend to be of the type that they will uh, take you back constantly. Uh, uh, you'll go 10 steps forward, several of them may take you eight steps backward. But uh, to this date, the only forward looking psychologist that I've come across is Dr. Divya Parashar and her psychology does not start at the rehabilitation center. It starts after the person leaves the rehabilitation center. And cutting across professions, I've not seen any rehabilitation professional use uh, digital media in as powerful a way as to, she does to touch uh, lives. Prosthetics and orthotics are very important for persons with all disabilities and uh, uh, unquestionably, the best person that I've come across is Anand Samuel. Social worker and community-based rehabilitation, these are all key areas in any rehabilitation program and uh, there is none better than Dr. Guru Nagarajan, who's been uh, working at the Christian Medical College uh, Rehab Center. He, was, he actually joined when I was undergoing my rehabilitation. Even today, when I look at the sheets that he has uh, developed for me, it, is, it had enormous detail. And family members are very, very important. And uh, the fine, one of the finest examples I've come across is Shubha Venkatesan. Her husband is a person with spinal cord injury, but she's just not confined herself to ensuring that she's a solid support for him, but also she's a backbone for at least a couple of hundred persons with spinal cord injury and their families in India. Sports is the easiest way to you know, help persons with disabilities come out and uh, start the process of integrating with the community. And as para sports leader, I can't think of anybody better than in the whole of India than Justin Jesudas, who is paralyzed neck down, but is an international uh, Paralympic swimmer and international Paralympic rifle shooter. And you need a peer mentor. And I can't think of anybody uh, who does that as thoroughly as Komal Kamra, who's a spinal cord injury for 25 plus years, a microbiologist, a researcher, and a person who is uh, working as in the field of epilepsy as well. And she is empathy personified. And that, that would be my dream rehabilitation. Of course, this can happen only in a dream. This, this group brings about uh, close to 500 years of experience. And if we are able to translate all their experiences and preserve it for posterity. I think uh, we would have the complete repository of resources needed to uh, ensure high quality rehabilitation for the foreseeable many decades ahead. Thank you. Oh, Vaidhi, I think what you said is uh, powerful. I think we need to add you as a friend in the dream team. But uh, the Ganga Foundation and you should work in the next years to create more such dream teams and make it accessible for the the larger audience, there are about 10,000 new spinal injuries happen every year. And uh, while we don't have a database on it, there must be what, by the about a uh, few lakhs of people at any point to, who are uh, having that spinal injury? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, there are. It needs a huge uh, transformation for us to do that. But obviously, we can't discuss all of that. We are trying to squeeze in 30 years of Vaidhi's life in 30 minutes. So only so much we can cover. We can keep going on and on. But there are a lot of people who want to ask the question now. Before we throw it open for the question, 
I mean, this brings to end uh, actually the fireside uh, chat of us. So now we would open for before that, you know, there are two objectives what we wanted to achieve today. One is for the people to understand uh, what a spinal injured person goes through and what are the uh, complications, how we can work towards making it to an inclusive society. So society is uh, great only if it becomes uh, inclusive. The second, which is more important for me, the last uh, many years of my personal and professional career, I've seen a lot of people coming to me with the problems. I'm not going to say any problem is a small one, but a problem what Vaidhi had gone through or many people had gone through, it puts in a perspective of individual problems, each one is there. And in my career, almost all the people who have come across would have heard about Vaidhi's story. I tell them, look at a perspective of your problem with the vis-a-vis -vis someone else is having now. So this is an opportunity I thought we should present for you people to understand how you can handle the different problems and step out. That's the objective of this in addition to uh, helping you to make an inclusive society. With this, what we will do is we'll throw it open. My request to the participants is just chat the question to me. My name is Thambaya Ilango. You will find that you can type the question to me. A few people had sent a lot of questions to me. I'm going to start with that. Meanwhile, you type it and keep sending it to me. I'll keep posting it to Vaidhi and Vaidhi can uh, start off. But the, while kind of people are typing the question, let me ask the questions what few people had mailed me and you can start with that. Uh, you spoke about Komal Kamra at one of the ones. She had a uh, few questions. Uh, one is, um, what scares you most today? At a personal level, nothing, you know. But over the past uh, decade, when uh, uh, it's distressing and it really scare, scares me is the prevalence of uh, sexual harassment and sexual abuse of persons with disabilities uh, across India, uh, in, including in rehabilitation centers. And uh, I believe there is no room for sexual harassment in any form in society. And when it comes to persons with disability and uh, in rehabilitation centers, the bar for sexual harassment has to be significantly higher. This is something that I never expected to see, but to see this morph in several places mm. uh, uh, has, is, has been, uh, uh, is probably the only thing that has saddened me in the uh, three decades of living with spinal cord injury. That's very, very sad. Anyway, she had uh, another question. Name one regret that pinches you the most. Nothing, I think, uh, which is why if you call me, you will have the, uh, song which in English means I have no regrets. There are no regrets, which was sung first by MS Subalakshmi in her United Nations concert in uh, 1966. And the song was composed by Rajaji. And uh, the other one, uh, nowadays many women, this is from question from Bal Gita. Nowadays, uh, more women who suffer SCR are identified through WhatsApp groups, etc. How can their needs be addressed? Uh, you have plans for them if uh, anything specific. I, I think women with spinal cord injury will also pretty much need timely quality rehabilitation. That can be, uh, that is a, a, a sin quo or not. There's no uh, negotiation on that aspect. But women with, I, and having come across these several instances of uh, women with disabilities being disabused, abused across the country, I believe every rehabilitation program of women must also include uh, a, a, a preceding step of teaching them what are the touches that are involved in rehabilitation, what are the right touches, getting them to get their consent, make them understand, and then do the rehabilitation in a sensitive way. Uh, let me throw this question to you and Dr. Divya Parasha. Doctor, you would have gone through that. Uh, what do you think? Is there a specific question from one person is there anything would you like to add to that? What Vaidhi said? See, I think uh, I, the rehab uh, treatments and education materials, including for uh, sexual functioning, seem to be more geared towards males. And there's no surprises there because the incidence of the injuries in men are more. But I think for women, especially when it comes to fertility and childbearing, um, those aspects get severely neglected and of course the challenges for women to also do self-catheterization also is something that they request 
whenever I've uh, seen them in therapy to be more. So I think being sensitized more towards the specific needs of the women uh, and their body, I think uh, definitely needs to be there. The biggest, and like Betty said, I think I get in touch more with people once the rehab is done. There is no surprises that women, and again, I won't generalize, but the trend typically is that especially women who are married and who get injured, incidences of them being abandoned, separated, or divorced are higher. And they are, ten, they are tending to fend for themselves. And I think one of the things I would strongly encourage is uh, vocational training for, uh, for women. Because they are kind of, they are stuck between a, in, a, in a tough place and just their vocational rehab uh, needs to be as much an emphasis as uh, their physical and emotional rehab. So that would be my two tips. Very powerful one, Doctor. Vadi, this question from, uh, I think, uh, Prabhu, it says uh, there are a lot of influential people in this group now. We are sitting. Uh, can you give us a roadmap of how we can bring the government or the policy makers to uh, consider an inclusive society? Uh, one, uh, disability-wise registry. Mm -hmm. Two, a realistic, low-cost, accessible India program that focuses on simple uh, ramps and more importantly, 35 square feet bathrooms everywhere, including in every building that is constructed by the private sector. Three, I think for decades, in the name of low-cost mobility and assistive devices and then in the uh, garb of giving uh, touching more people uh, for an X amount of money. What has been inflicted across disability is uh, mediocre devices, whether be it hearing aids or canes or wheelchairs or crutches or uh, uh, artificial legs. I think India must invest in high quality mobility and assistive devices. Kevin Jerma, who is a deaf blind person, became uh, about four years ago the first deaf blind person to. Uh, become a lawyer from Harvard and she uses a, uh, an iPad and a smartphone to do everything and she's all completely independent it, uh, in her communication. It does not matter that she can't uh, uh, see, hear or speak but uh, uh, technology empowers and I think to do that for all people with disability in India, let's say even over just a three year period and then take care of the flow that happens every year is not going to cost the government uh, much. And these three aspects need to be addressed. I think if these three, and India must become an attractive destination for uh, uh, rehabilitation professionals to pursue a career. 95% of the high quality uh, for rehabilitation doctors and therapists and prosthetic and orthotic experts with the experience they tend, generally tend to go abroad. No, I, I think you captured it well. Uh, but having said that, Paiti, when compared to 30 years back, when you are struggling to get admission back to IIM, I think it's important to note in the last few years, the number of people with a spinal injury or a paraplegic getting admission into this premier institute has kind of grown now. It has become much better. The pace should be far better, uh, but it has become a better place. Absolutely. And uh, IIM Bangalore has come a long way. And from the time they started taking students with disability in sizable numbers, in uh, 2002 and since 2010 I've been there every single year and every year I, even in 2010 I thought uh, I am Bangalore had reached standards the highest possible standards of inclusive education but every single year just as Virat Kohli has this goal of 1% improvement every day every year every day I am Bangalore's inclusivity has improved every year and uh, it was very heartening to hear Professor Vasanthi Srinivasan uh, who's a, uh, also a batchmate of ours and who's been in, working in IIM Bangalore for almost 25, 25 plus years. After Jaskaran Singh, who's the most physically challenged person to get admission to any institute of higher learning in India, she said after having had Jaskaran Singh on campus, we are not bothered about any level of disability. We are ready for everything. And that is not something that costs money. If what has been done at IIM Bangalore can be replicated in every school and college in India. I think that will be a landscape altering uh, development. 
I think it is very important. Let me add to this, Vaidhi. He says, all of us who are there in corporate world or in the places of influence, first ask, is our office or is our college or our school or our hospital is uh, completely intrusive? We can make a change there. I, I can tell you about it. I mean, I know, I said, I know Vaidhi for the last 30 years. And uh, our house didn't have a ramp till Vaidhi came on. And that is how much of awareness we have. Now I kind of start looking at it with a keen eye wherever I go there and I start putting the pressure. Uh, but you don't need to wait for Vaidhi to come to your house. You can start uh, hopefully with this conversation. So Vaidhi, let me kind of uh, ask you an embarrassing one, which is uh, you remember medical history of uh, all persons very accurately. Does it show your professionalism or your dedication or both? I don't see. I think if we, uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, once the rehabilitation program is over, it is next to impossible for uh, uh, the high quality rehabilitation doctors and therapists to be in touch and guide each and every person with spinal cord injury. A person with spinal cord injury may have some issue or the other uh, once in a while throughout their lifetime. And that is best done by peer trainers. And in a country, I mean, I live in Chennai. I can assure you there's not a single urologist who is capable of understanding bladder management in the context of spinal cord injury. There are probably two therapists who understand spinal cord injury. There is not a single physiatrist in Chennai with to whom I can go with confidence. Not all physiatrists understand spinal cord injury. We must get that correct. Physiatrist, mm. a physiatrist does not mean automatically understanding. And you, that is pretty much the scenario almost across the country. So persons with spinal cord injury collectively bring significant expertise and we do feel very uh, shared with it liberally. I mean, just to give you an example, yesterday a, pers a, quadruple, a person with, uh, who was paralyzed neck down had some uh, issues and uh, the doctor to whom we spoke, he told him, please go to the hospital immediately. That person mm -hmm. called me and uh, I told him, just do these one or two simple things. And he did that and he texted uh, uh, in the morning saying that I'm absolutely uh, not fully recovered, but I'm much more comfortable and I'm sure I'll manage at home. So, I mean, I think uh, this is the level of uh, 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 lack of uh, high quality uh, uh, doctors who understand spinal cord injury in India, therapists who understand spinal cord injury in India, and the best person to fill that gap will be persons with spinal cord injury themselves. So from that perspective, I think uh, getting attention to detail, learning from others, and also sharing what I hear for, with others. I think that's uh, a day-to-day -day process. No, I think well said. I just want to interject and say, uh, Professor Raghuram is uh, on this one. He said, thank you for the acknowledgement to IIM Bangalore. And um, actually we should thank you, Professor. And he said, our focus is to adjust to those with learning disabilities. That's what he's saying. And uh, Professor, from my side, I can tell you how much I am has uh, done in the last few years. I think a lot of credit must uh, definitely go to you. Thank you for that. Maybe if you want to add something to Professor is on that. In this one. Professor Raghunam, thank you. And I think uh, uh, Professor, I know Professor Raghunam's aspiration is for I am Bangalore to start having uh, faculty who are persons with disability. I hope uh, that will become reality in the next five years or 10 years. I'm, I'm sure it will. There is a question from a uh, person, Ganesan. He says, in our country with nil or very little social security net, uh, SCI person children are denied quality higher education. What can be done in this from foundations or individuals who work among SCI persons? Uh, it's a very tough one. And uh, I would answer that in two parts. I'll first focus on children of persons who are paralyzed uh, uh, below the neck level. Their, the, their children tend to face significantly more challenges because even persons who are paralyzed uh, below the neck, uh, their possibilities are, uh, if they apply their mind, uh, much more. So I think uh, as a first step, we should focus on bundling persons, children of persons who are paralyzed neck down, and we should get the CSR programs and governments to come and fund their education for a lifetime. And I think uh, it is a, it's a, it's an excellent question, and uh, this is something that has to be done. The another question is, what is your message to people working in social sector? People working in social sector, I think uh, 
uh, I think come in learn. I mean, I mean uh, learn to just work with all types of people with disabilities that you come in touch. You may be a spinal injured person. You don't need to only work with spinal injured person. If you are an amputee, you don't need to just look at amputee. I think it is time that uh, persons with different disabilities look to become uh, networking partners for persons with different types of disabilities. So that way, the auto automatically the footprint improves. At present, I guess persons with spinal cord injury focus on persons with spinal cord injury. Persons with amputation focus on amputation. I think if we need to rapidly scale up the uh, peer group networking, I think cross uh, uh, stream wor working is very important. We will kind of keep going maybe another few minutes. Uh, I think, is there a way to a effort to integrate uh, the native healing system such as Ayurveda to improve healing? Can that be explored instead of uh, outrightly dismissing it? I wouldn't outrightly dismiss uh, that Elongo, but I think uh, uh, it's almost a pilgrimage that many, many persons with spinal cord injury, uh, they go for Ayurveda or other native systems of healing in the hope that they may be able to uh, walk, they may be able to get back to status quo ante. But uh, I don't think the native systems of healing can do that for any disability. What the native systems of healing, where it should be used is to uh, use them to understand low cost nutrition, some uh, medications. I mean, I think uh, if you look around yourself, uh, almost many, several, any plant that your goat or a cow eats, is going to be nutritious or will have medicinal value. So those kind of things are definitely reside, but it must be used for the right purpose. But uh, unfortunately, speaking only for spinal cord injury, I think people approach native systems of healing with the hope that they'll walk, they'll walk again and desert. And that is something that I uh, believe that persons with spinal cord injury should not do. While wanting to walk is a legitimate aspiration, the reality is that Neurological recovery is impossible after spinal cord injury. Even if you walk with assistive devices, the space of walking is not going to be good enough for functional activity. And uh, you must focus on moving ahead with uh, active life with what is good and with the wheelchair as a mobility option. And if by the grace of God, there is physical improvement. And if you start walking in some form, nobody is going to be unhappy. I think the other one, which is a very interesting suggestion, I will read it out here. Other area where you can improve dissemination of information is to provide a list of trusted vendors, stroke manufacturers for supply and support of disability aids, including equipment, accessories, and consumables. Price information also can be made part of it. If you can upload this list on a periodic basis, it will be useful for a large number of people. I thought it seemed a very sensible advice. Sorry. It is a number, but I think the number of uh, uh, entities that manufacture high, I mean, high quality assistive or mobility devices is, uh, you can count it on the fingers of one hand, but we will nonetheless put that up and hope that number keeps increasing over the years. I think we should uh, look at it. All the more reason, maybe we should uh, put some one. I kind of know, both of us know the number of people who are sitting on a wrong wheelchair in this country. Uh, we can take the step now. And I'm going to ask you the last couple of questions uh, now. There are a little, I don't know how you can answer. What are the life expectancy of a rural Indian acquiring a spinal cord injury vis-a-vis uh, -vis an urban Indian acquiring a spinal cord injury? There are I, I, I think uh, uh, I would, uh, rather than looking at rural Indian versus urban Indian, I would look at uh, as persons receiving high quality rehabilitation in a timely manner and the rest. Persons who receive quality rehabilitation in a timely manner and are taught practices of low cost living, I think the qual their quality of lives and life expectancy uh, is, uh, should and will be higher. I, can, I don't think we have uh, actual research to prove this, but based on uh, empirical uh, evidence over the past 10 years, I think that can be stated as a fact. Something else that can be stated as a fact is any person with spinal cord injury or for that matter, any disability who is into any sports leads a much fitter, stronger and more active life. And persons who do not receive this rehabilitation, quality rehabilitation or who receive very delayed rehabilitation, 
their quality of life and life expectancy will definitely be compromised no doubts about that mm, that's it sir a good one uh, would you like to say somebody says what happened to the state spinal injury centers how many have started and are they doing a good job every state government i think has uh, a spinal injury center and uh, uh, there was also an initiative to set some region specific spinal injury centers uh, physical they have physical infrastructure but do they have high quality rehabilitation professionals i think there uh, the gap is very uh, huge and but it is something that can be worked on easily because the physical infrastructure is there if you are able to get a small group of uh, uh, we have high quality rehabilitation professionals work with these centers and offer training programs at zero cost or at a low cost rather than exorbitant rates i think uh, that is how one needs to uh, spread rehabilitation expertise i i, I think spreading rehabilitation expertise should not become a money making proposition for uh, any organization and i think that is important that is where i think uh, dr mary vargis's vision of uh, setting up education streams in physiotherapy occupational therapy prosthetics and orthotics physiatry and uh, allied professions that is leading to a significant increase in the number of high quality professionals and uh, who are spreading out slowly across india but as i mentioned because of the lack of attractive career opportunities at least 90 to 95% of them navigate abroad as well but at least they are touching their lives in good ways and that has to be the focus so oh, i think uh... well said uh, let me put the last question which is uh, by the in 20 years hence you will be 75 years i don't know whether mathematically that is right because for others i tell why the why the tells me he is 21 with lot of difficulty i convinced him to be 25 because legal drinking age in india is 25 so having said that let me get the question why the back in 20 years from now you will be 75 years what is that you see would have been achieved not withstanding that i wish you 100 years of service to humanity let me just oh, oh. for sure i wish to live to 100 no doubts about that and uh, i think by 75 especially if we are able to leverage technology and the uh, the high quality rehabilitation uh, uh, expertise that resides in an increasingly larger number of people we would have solved the problem of existential issues and uh, with we if we have 10 more uh, startups in mobility and assistive devices such as such as neo motion from iit madras i think we would have suppliers of high quality mobility and assistive devices and once those two are in place i think you will find lot of people with disabilities will find their way so that that i think will definitely happen i have no doubts about that maybe i think there are few questions there and i'll ask them to send i will sum up all these questions and send it to you maybe you can respond back to them now that uh, uh, there are a couple of people also suggested that uh, we shouldn't uh, put too much stress on you and uh, with this one what i kind of want to thank you on behalf of everyone and uh, it is it has been a great hearing from you about what you have done 30 years more importantly what do you think needs to happen at that and uh, i wish that you would close it with the final words and then you should do more of this quite often Uh, i would like to close it with the final words that uh, were used in the letter that was written by dr suranjan bhattacharjee in 1990 to i am bangalore as a country india must do everything that is possible to make sure that persons with disability are able to live to that highest and fullest potential thank you thank you elango and thank you dr divya parash thank you all today i must uh, apologize to a lot of people who couldn't come there for some reason zoom it allowed only 100 people whereas we thought there are 500 countless people if any of your friends are there please express uh, our sincere regrets and uh, we will do one more of this to definitely cover up thank you and uh, good night all of you and thank you dr divya it is great to have you with us thank you bye with this will end by the thanks thank you dear all if you are a person with spinal cord injury or if you know any person with a spinal cord injury or sitting on a wheelchair 
or unable to move his legs or hands or is confined to bed at all times. You may call S. Vaidyanathan for the right guidance and support. You can reach Vaidyanathan at 97909-36844. Let me repeat the number. 97909-36844. Thank you.